Hello everybody, my name is New. Today's project is brought to you by Zell. If you've seen any of our previous videos, you'll have already met her. She's quite a big fan of Wavy. She messaged me freaking out over this hat that one of the members was wearing. She asked me if I could make her the hat and I of course said yes because it's actually a really, really simple project. I think the hat's by a brand called Loverboy. You know, there's some really awesome details on the hat where they knitted separate pieces and then stitched it together with visible top stitching and then done some fun stuff with the ears. We're not doing a direct reproduction. We're making the ears to go with the beanie. Okay, so I've actually made this beanie three times now. The first time was in a tan with like smaller ears. The second time I made it in a white collar with big floppy awful ears. And then the third time is the one that I'm going to be showing you in the video today. The stitches that you're going to need specifically today are a chain stitch, a slip stitch, and a single crochet. That is it. Easy peasy. I'm not actually going to film a tutorial for how to make a beanie for two reasons. First being, I learned how to crochet beanies from YouTube. Quick search of YouTube will turn up a lot of really fantastic beanie tutorials, no worries. Second reason being, if you already own a beanie, you can totally make these ears and just attach them to a pre-existing beanie. Here we go. The trick to making these ears is to use a hook size that is smaller than the one recommended by your yarn. So for me, the yarn that I'm using is quite chunky and it recommended that I use quite a big hook. I was using a seven millimeter hook to make the hat itself. And so when I went to make the bigger ears, the mistake I made is that I used that seven millimeter hook, which is the same size as what I used for the main beanie, base beanie. So I do recommend using a hook that's too small for the yarn. As I said before, you only need three stitches for these ears. That's a chain, a single crochet, and a slip stitch. Okay, so here we go with the yarn. Six chains. Five chains and then a turning chain. And then we are single crocheting in the second chain from the hook. Crocheting in the next four chains till we get to the end. And we have five single crochets. Just counting here to make sure we have five and one chain stitch that we can turn around. Okay, so you can see I am crocheting in the back loop. That's to give it the ribbed effect. And so we're doing a single crochet into the next five stitches. This yarn is quite PC, so at times it's Hard to get the yarn in there. Anyway, here we go. Three chains. Okay, turn and single crochet into the second chain from the hook. Single crochet into the last chain that we have there. And then single crochet into the back loops only for the next five stitches. Oh yes, meow meow. Again, when you get to the bottom flat edge of your ear, you're doing one chain turning and then we're gonna single crochet into the back stitch. This time we're going for the next seven stitches because we've added two single crochets. As you can see, it's quite tight because we're using a really small hook with quite a chunky yarn. So it might be a little bit fiddly and a little bit frustrating compared to kind of a normal crochet, but I promise it's not too bad. You know, just be patient with it and it's definitely worth putting it off with it. So here we go again, three chains, turn, single crochet into the second chain from the hook. 
And then we've only got one more chain, so single crochet in there. And then we are <laughs> crocheting into the back loop for the next seven stitches. Now you're just gonna keep doing that for however big you want your ears to be. So if you wanna have massive, gigantic, like, I don't know, fantasy creature, bat, flyaway dragon ears on your <laughs> uh, beanie, go for it, just keep going. Me personally, I ended up getting up to, I think it was 17 stitches or 19. Yeah, so I did 19 stitches and go back and have a look at what we do when we get to the top. Okay, so now I've gotten to the top of my ear. I have 17, no, sorry, 19 stitches and I wanna start reducing. I want my ear to start kind of going down Okay, so here you can see I'm doing the last two stitches in this row. I'm stopping because that's about as tall as I want my ears to go. So I'm stopping, I'm turning, and I'm doing a slip stitch into underneath both hoops or loops. Underneath both loops, I'm doing a slip stitch for the first two stitches. One. And two. Then after that, I'm just um, single crocheting in the back loop for the rest of the row. The slip stitches are just there to try and breach the um, step down between the different low, the rows so it doesn't look too kind of geometric. It already looks pretty geometric right now, but we're gonna come back and we're gonna fix that later. Okay, so I'm coming up on the end of this row. Again, I'm gonna stop two stitches short of the end. And that means that I am going to be single crocheting over my two slip stitched rows. Which sounds a little bit kind of strange, but I'm doing it again to kind of reduce that blocky geometric kind of step shape. You know, we want the cat ears to be more round and curved which is why I'm doing those um, slip stitches at the end of the row. <laughs> I promise if I try and make a crochet tutorial in the, again, I'll try not to be so awful about <laughs> showing what I'm doing. Again, I'm turning and doing a slip stitch into the first two stitches. I think just what you saw me do just here is that I actually did a turning chain. So I don't think it matters if you do a turning chain or you don't can just go straight back in without the turning chain or if that's a bit fiddly you know go ahead and do a turning chain no big deal so it's the same situation as with the first part just keep stepping down until you get down to five stitches which is what we started with now if you wanted kind of less of a flat side on your cat ears, you could reduce the amount of stitches that you do at the beginning of the end to three stitches or one stitch. And that would just mean that your cat ears would probably be more curved. My cat ears have some straight sort of sides right at the beginning on the bottom, um, which helps give it a little bit of extra height because we wanted the ears to look quite big. But if you don't like that, you can start with three stitches, you can start with one stitch, you can start with... Actually, you can start with even stitches if you wanted to. The thing with these ears is you could take the same technique and do whatever you like with it. So start off with fewer stitches. You can add one stitch and that would mean that your ears would be wider and shorter. Or you could add three stitches in every row and that means that you would have narrow more narrow, taller sort of ears. You know, it's totally up to you. You know, just take the idea and run free, <laughs> customize, <laughs> bake the ears of your dreams. <laughs> okay. So here we are, we've got five stitches. I'm just gonna finish this row.
Then we're going to chain and then turn and finish off by doing five single crochets into the back loops so that we're ending on the top curved part of the cat ear. And that's the basic shape of your cat ear finished. Um, we've got a little bit more work to do on it before it's totally done, but that's the crocheting part of it finished anyway. And if you're curious, this is how my wonky written pattern turned out. You can pause here if you want to give it a attempt to read it. <laughs> um, like I said, this is my first time making a crochet video, so I'm I'm learning and I feel like if you have any suggestions for making this process a lot clearer for you as <laughs> consumers, so to speak, then please let me know. Okay, leave yourself quite a long tail and then uh, pull it through that last loop just to tie it off. For this next bit, you can either use a yarn needle or just the hook, whatever is easier for you. We're going to take the needle and run it through the top of each stitch on that curved side of the cat ear. You can see that I'm like putting the needle into a stitch and then wrapping the needle around the little bit of yarn that connects the two stitches and then going through the next stitch. And the reason I'm doing this is to kind of hide the yarn and also help bridge that blocky square shape that's on the top of the, the cat ear right now. You're going to go ahead and do that same thing all the way around the whole perimeter of the ear. So up one side, down the other, and then on the bottom of the ear. Then what you can do is pull on the tail and arrange the ear into the kind of shape and size and tension, etc., that you want for your ear. Again, the whole purpose of this is to bridge that geometric blocky shape and also gather the ear slightly so that it's got a little bit of a curve. It's not just a flat shape. And now it's the easy part. You've just got to arrange the ears onto the beanie to your liking. I'm using some sewing pins just to help me out. Uh, and then you take that same yarn needle that you used previously and you just stitch it on. <laughs> I didn't use any kind of special technique. Uh, at this point, as I said, this was the third time that I'd made this hat and so I just kind of got in there with a, a darning needle and just whip stitched it on there. Um, if all of your yarn is the same color, then that's not a problem at all. The stitches will just disappear into the beanie. However, if you are putting cat ears of a contrasting color on your beanie, you might want to be a little bit more careful and hide your stitches. Here I'm going to treat you guys uh, with an exclusive look at my very chaotic workspace and my uh, creepy half-painted mannequin head. So as I said, I like the placement of the ears, so now I'm just going in and uh, whip stitching those suckers on. Uh, Easy peasy. <laughs> I gotta stop saying that. That's really weird. When you finish whip stipping, whip stip, stip, stip. <laughs> when you finish whip, whip stitching the ears on, just uh, pull the t tail into the inside of the beanie and tie it off, and uh, you can snip the end and you're finished. And then obviously repeat the same thing for the other ear. Before I send you to the beauty shots, uh, I just want to let you know that the <laughs> beanie that Zella's actually wearing was the version one white beanie with the fluffy, floppy, gross ears that I really, really hate. So um, if, <laughs> if she looks a little bit different than this one that I'm showing you here, that is why. She's also going to be modeling the tan beanie, which is made exactly the same way as this one. It just has fewer stitches. So I just, I think I went up to like... 13 stitches on that one. So that's an example of uh, using the same technique to make a smaller ear. But I hope you enjoy anyway, and here we go. Oh, 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 oh,
That's a wrap on another video. And uh, as you can see, we had way too much fun <laughs> filming this. Um, we're all cat people, if you can't tell. If you have any suggestions for our Inspired by DIY series, I would love to hear them in the comments. And if you have any questions about this project, I will be happy to answer them. I hope this video finds all of you very well and you're staying happy and healthy. Bye bye for now.